Hi, my name is Forrest Stevens. I spent many childhood summers traveling in my family's van. These were some of the best times of my life. That was me, the kid in the picture with the big ears. It came as no surprise that after I graduated high school, I bought a minivan. I didn't even know about hashtag van life. I didn't even have an Instagram. When I was 21, I bought a Chevy 20 van, I included myself in the van life community, and I even tried to capitalize on the trend. But my pictures didn't get many likes, Cliff Bar and Kettle Brand didn't reach out to me with a sponsorship deal. See, I love traveling in vans, but I found the space cramped. Cooking was a drag, and the winter's cold. For me, it was a great way to travel, but a hard way to live. The Instagram pictures of hashtag van life always show beautiful beaches, beautiful people, and beautiful vans. From my own experience, I knew what a parking lot looked like, my hair not being washed for days looked like, and mold in a multi-decade old van looked like. I figured it was time for me to get to the bottom of what the reality of hashtag van life actually is. My experience in van life is limited and biased. I decided that the best way to answer the many questions I have about van life is to have honest conversations with people who live in vans. So I posted an ad to Craigslist. One thing I wanted to figure out is if van life could replace the current American dream of the home with the white picket fence. Hey, hey. Chance, this is Gabriel. Hey. Nice to meet you, Gabriel. Nice to meet you, this? an option for the white picket fence. Okay, well, <laughs> so I don't think it's for the, the normal person. Mm -hmm. Just uh, nine to five likes their comfort. Like, y y I feel like van life can be comfortable, but you do have to be a little bit comfortable with the uncomfortable. I think van life is a, a movement towards freedom and exploration, and there's a lot of things that partake in that but I don't think it's uh, the American dream I think that van life is kind of a young person's game generally speaking I definitely know people that are older that are in the van life and whatnot and there's definitely um, a sect of vehicle dwelling that is retirees but generally speaking um, it, it tends to be younger people um, and I think that's just due to the fact that it's a it's a little more rough of a lifestyle. I think so, yeah. I mean, it really is very similar to the American dream if you're just talking about the freedom. The success part's different for different people, right? And, you know, being able to live freely and keep moving and have that kind of uh, free-spirited adventure is for sure the American dream in a lot of ways. I do know some families that live in vehicles, but for the vast, vast majority of people, it would be impossible for them to have a family in a vehicle and I think that um, I don't think the American dream or the new like um, common striving is ever going to move away from the family and you guys are about to have a child so I wanted to just like see what you guys thought about having a family in a van yeah. Yeah, John, you should check it up on Instagram. There are tons of like. Yeah, we looked into it. There's some very cute baby van like photos. I don't know, it's hard to say how many of those people are living full time in their van, and as discussed, we, we won't be full timing it when the baby comes, just to make our lives simpler and more comfortable, I guess. Um, 
but it certainly I think would be a really cool thing. Like, if, honestly, if I was raised in a van, I would be super proud of it. Uh, maybe not very initially in, mm. like, you know, elementary school, but right now I would be super proud of my parents for being that open-minded. It seems to me that the biggest obstacle that van life has to overcome if it wants to compete with the societal norm of the American dream is comfort. The house in the suburbs can be cushy, and van life can be challenging. Well, like everybody asks me, where do, where's your bathroom? Where do you shower? Right. Where's, uh, where's your fridge? I, or where's this? Where's that? Yeah. All their comfort that they have every day. Um, but for me, I do have some of it. I don't have a bathroom <laughs> and stuff, but I make do. Like I shower at work and I, or uh, at the pool or something. But right. it's just sometimes stuff like that is a little bit more time consuming and people mm -hmm. don't really want to go shower at the pool or something. Right. But I feel like it's worth it. What's some different aspects of this lifestyle that get overlooked? You have to like yourself. <laughs> you're, you're by yourself, usually, unless you're with a partner. Or... It's a lot of alone time. Yeah. And it's a lot of alone time in a very confined space. So it's not like, you know, you have an apartment to yourself. Mm. You can move around, you can put the TV on, you can do all these things that occupy your hands and your time. Mm. In the van, especially if it's cold out, you're, you're in the van. For me, I'm doing it as um, a single male and I'm nomadic, like quite nomadic. Um, a lot of people are relatively stationary and so that changes the game a lot. We got the difficulties of being nomadic as well as living in a tiny space, which um, like that's kind of the biggest difficulty with the biggest change with van life is just living in a smaller space and not having everything that you need. By not having everything you need, I mean not having a, a bathroom and a shower. Um, because you can have everything else you need in the van. The vehicle will break down eventually and you'll get a knock on the door by some drunk or a cop, which has never happened to me, or so much little things. And the stress of having it parked somewhere overnight, that way if you're with friends or even parked for a week if you're leaving, the stress of, of that, that's brought me a lot of stress. That's one of the worst things for me, just not knowing my van's gonna be towed. That's a huge one. With all these challenges, it's hard to believe what social media shows us when we look into van life. How do you look like a model in front of your Volkswagen bus if you haven't had a shower? Is this just a facade? So oftentimes in social media, uh, van life is kind of romanticized. Um, what do you guys think about that whole aspect of maybe portraying something that isn't exactly real? Mm -hmm. In this like that's Instagram, isn't it? <laughs> it? It's the platform is made for that to, to just create this magical photo, this capture, this moment in time that it's is like a fantasy. perfection. Unobtainable to live that way for sure. Like you can get those moments, but it's not going to be your everyday life. For anybody looking at van life, if that's the only thing you're looking at, you're going to get a non accurate representation of what the life actually is. That's one of the things I don't really like about the van life movement is a lot of people are moving into a vehicle to like create an Instagram account so they can make money off of their van and I, I just find that kind of disingenuous. Um, for me, I moved into a vehicle because I needed to. It was kind of the only option to continue. Like the goals I have, a van is a means to get to those goals. It was never like, I want to live in a van because I want to live in a van. It was like, oh, I have these goals and living in a van will get me to those, help me reach, attain those goals. Instagram filters can make anything look nice. Obviously you have to shit in the woods once in a while and no one's posting a pic on Instagram of that shit right in the woods. We clean this bus every day. You have to sweep out everything. You put everything back mm -hmm. in its proper spot. Otherwise it's just like full chaos and as soon as you hit the road. Life is messy and dirty and that's some of the fun of it. And life is amazing, but sometimes it's not as nice as the pictures, right? You know, you're, you're shitting in the forest or you're, you know, dealing with parking in sketchy spots where you're not sleeping super well at uh, night because you think maybe someone's gonna wake you up or something like that. I think that romantic vision gets a lot of people interested, mm -hmm. but it's not really a reality. No? <laughs> no. Um, not for me anyways. Mm -hmm. Who wants to wake up in a day and share the worst part about your day? So I think that's where it gets over glamorized that way. You know, it's not all pretty. I mean, you want the truth. I mean, I pee in a bottle 
You know what I mean? Like when I'm in the van, so it's not all glamorous. Van life is so popular right now. Westphalia is, you know, getting that Westphalia on the on the coast of Oregon is like that's the shot that everybody wants to get. But at the same time, it's it's not all like that. Those vans that look all clean and most of the time is spent just living amongst your own junk and your own stuff and going through a transition of what do I really need and what really do I not need to be happy and to function. I mean, I guess I am partly doing this because I saw others do it at first and maybe that was a bit like glamorized, I guess, but for me it was a more like a financial decision to live this way, to travel this way, really. You put the bells and whistles on homelessness, essentially, because that's what this is. Um, you know, it gets like a larger amount of people doing it, but in this case, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that a cultural shift is happening because of economic uh, pressures on people, and I think this is just a way for people to survive and to get ahead and to live a more comfortable, financially comfortable life. Sometimes when you're out living in your van, people look at you like you're a homeless person. And I'd say that's the main thing I had to get over is caring what other people thought about me. And now, I mean, I'll go fill up my water jugs. Some days you fill them up in a water fountain and everyone's looking at you like, what are you doing? There's a lot of people who won't ever live this life. So they like the escapism. They, they're looking for those perfect moments. The pictures and stuff that you see don't always equate to the real life. Having said that, if you're willing enough to do it, then it's you just work it out in a different way. Van life allows us to live coast to coast. Um, it allows us to kind of chase our passions, which right now are, are mountain biking and exploring. Um, and it kind of, it's freedom. It's just freedom to kind of decide moment by moment uh, how we're gonna spend our time. Something like this can allow someone to become an entrepreneur can allow you in this day and age of everything being on the internet and digitized for that graphic artist to uh, travel full time and work on the road. I mean, if you're tethered to the internet you, and you can work through your computer, you do not have to stay in one location. The sense of really, you know, after work you go home, you put your feet up, you have this ah feeling. Mm -hmm. that, that is now what I get when I get into my van. So mm. being able to do all these adventures and still feel at home, yeah. that's pretty cool. I feel like if I was in my home, I could stay there, watch Netflix, um, clean up, clean a huge house, um, not focus on minimalism. Uh, this eliminates all these distractions for me, and then I could go do photography, um, whatever I want, read, uh, spend time with my friends on the beach, and even go travel to places where I might have stayed cozy at home otherwise. But I mean, at the same time, as much as Instagram does romanticize it, it is amazing and the best times of my life have been in this van. Like, I would not trade it for a house right now. I mean, I'd love to have a shower and have Wi-Fi and have the amenities of a house, but I wouldn't trade it for the freedom that I have. This is the beginning of something bigger. And because it's glamorized, it's maybe becoming more popular to more people that maybe would otherwise not even consider doing this. Like, why is my photo not getting as many likes or comments? And then you compare it to other people's and see, oh, well, this one looks so much more, like this has a skinny woman in a bikini sitting on a van, you know, and like, neither one of us is a skinny woman <laughs> with a, in a bikini. So that's not gonna happen in our life, but um, mm. how do you compete with that? And then it's, why should we compete with it, but yet, we want the likes, we want the likes, we want the likes, you know? People like the images that are over-sexualized or over-glossy or Hollywoodized or... And that's just not reality. There's so much diversity in the world and that's really what makes it beautiful. But you don't see that diversity when people on Instagram are feeling like they need to post these images that match this idea of what beauty is that isn't actually mm. true. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a larger societal problem that we, we think of beauty in one way um, instead of seeing it in a broader way. And it's it's harder to share that on, on social media. I don't think Instagram is an accurate representation of anything. <laughs> it's Instagram. That's why it's fun. <laughs> It was time to talk to somebody who was truly famous for van life, Jimmy and Sabrina Harrell. 
of Wanderbus. These two are often very harshly criticized for their over-glamorization of living in a van. Can't hear you. Can't hear me? Okay. Can you hear me now? I'm Jimmy. And I'm Sabrina. And uh, we're traveling this uh, 1973 Volkswagen bus. We figured, like, let's buy a van. And it's a lot bigger than a backpack. <laughs> I grew up thinking that money was the most important thing in my life. So I studied really hard in school, went to a good college, got a business degree, I worked at a Fortune 100 company before I was 25, and all for nothing almost all to realize that at the end of the day, money isn't what matters. It's happiness and being free and loving what you do. Oftentimes we find that with less, we're happier than we were before. What do you two think about the over-romanticization of van, the van life experience on social media? I think that everything is over-romanticized on social media. I think that parenting or being a professional athlete or being a celebrity Everything looks better on social media, but honestly, that's why we love it so much. I mean, you get to focus on the good. You get to highlight the good parts of your life. Like, you see happy babies smiling. You don't see when they're crying or when they leave you a diaper full of shit. So I think that's what fan life is. Like, it is over-romanticized because you see the good, the good side of it, you know? And um, But that's also what makes it so appealing. That's why we're willing to sacrifice the things like come Social media, it's basically like entertainment. Our way to show to entertain the people is to show the good side of it and kind of sell dream, kind of inspire people. That's why we focus on this positive aspect of van life. Well, what do you say to people that accuse you of over-romanticizing van life? I just try to not pay attention to those people. Um, I think that people will always have something negative to say, but that we should just follow our heart and do what makes us happy and you know for me I'm all about peace and love and I love spreading positive vibes and I try to focus more on the people who come back and they feel something good from my art and from what I put out there on the internet. A lot of people uh, get into this lifestyle by choice but what do you say to people that um, live in a van just out of necessity? Um, I imagine it must be a lot more difficult because there are moments when, you know, we struggle feeling like we don't have a home or we don't have enough space, we don't have enough privacy or comfort. And at the end of the day, we know that that was our choice because we just love to travel. We love adventure. We love being out there. So it's like we have that kind of to remind us of why we do what we do. But if this was just complete necessity, I think it would be hard. But at the same time, it's better than living on the streets. I mean, you have a roof over your head. You have a tiny bit of privacy, a tiny, tiny bit, bit of comfort, and a tiny bit of space, so, um, you know, it depends on how you look at it, I think. I actually met up with a man who lived out of his motorhome out of necessity. He definitely had some issues with this lifestyle, and one of them was even finding a place to park. I was parked on a private property, paying a bit of rent, and the um, authorities from the municipality, I think, came and knocked on, on my uh, camper and asked me, are you living in the house or are you living in here? And uh, I said, I'm living in here. And they said, no, you can't live in a camper in Santa. I, I, I left and um, I parked down by the ocean and I was okay there. and talking to other people who were in a similar circumstance, I heard that the, the, the authorities uh, were, were being lenient because they realized the urgency of the housing situation. So people in campers who were living in campers were being left alone. But at two o'clock in the morning, some people uh, with their flashlights and banging on the, on, on the side of the, uh, my house, you got a driver's license. I said, who are you? He said, we're the police. And they said, I've got to go uh, to a place that is uh, a regular uh, RV camp. We're here to enforce the bylaw. You've got to go. I said, okay, I'm out of here. If I'm to truly understand van life, the hashtag, the glamorization, the lifestyle, then it only makes sense that I try to become van life famous. The only problem is, is I don't even live in a van. This is going to be difficult. 
and so I need some help. Christina Adams from Adventure Dorks from earlier is actually the owner of a social media management company. So I gave her a call. As somebody who wants to become Instagram famous uh, really quickly, I want to become like rapidly get a lot of followers. What would you suggest to them? There's two really key things. One is to post frequently using hashtags that are popular with, well, actually, it's kind of multiple things. It's great quality content. Post frequently. Use the relevant hashtags. And the other key thing is to search out influencers with a similar target audience and try to build a relationship with them. I'm just down at Clover Point in Victoria, British Columbia right now, and I'm going to meet up with Quentin. He's a van dweller, and I hope to do some photo collabs to make my Instagram pop. This is his van again. We're going to do a little Instagram shoot. Say Hell what up. Yeah, man. Let's shoot it up. <laughs> this strategy is going to get you quality following. Uh, but it does take a little bit longer. What is your stance on the idea of just buying followers? Just clicking a button on a website and it says, you know, we'll give you a thousand followers. So those are all going to be probably bots or, or people like farms out there. And it's just not actual people who are engaging in what you have to say. You have to watch out for... Um, getting blacklisted if your account suddenly becomes super super highly active then instagram might shut you down because they know it's it's a fake right thanks okay bye bye not following much of the good advice that i just received i bought 2500 followers for 20 bucks 300 of them fell off the next day none of these people engaged in my posts so to make up for that i spent 40 bucks a month to automatically gain 500 likes per post. I also gave my password and 50 bucks to some guy in Sylvania who then put my Instagram account into an algorithm that likes, follows, and comments, really bad comments, on anything related to hashtag van life. Now this worked. I got about 50 to 100 followers a day from this. I also paid about 20 bucks in legit advertising on Instagram, but it didn't really yield anything noticeable. If I'm to become van life famous, I need to look the part. So I enlisted my friend Greg to help me with the most important part of the look, the man bun. So I think it just clips in. Yeah, so we gotta like try to figure out how this actually works. So these things. Go wider. Yeah. Your hair would go in between these things, right? Yeah. No, it just slides right off. <laughs> uh, okay. How do we do this? Emily. Yeah. We need your help. I'm thinking we should almost do it upside down so his bun goes out better. Does that make sense? Yeah. Part your hair wherever you would normally. And then section off the hair perpendicularly from your part down to your ear. <laughs> what? Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Okay, lean down. We gotta get this out then. Alright. But it's a great first prototype. <laughs> yeah, it was. An important part to the journey of becoming van life famous is a tour of your van home. So I did what I could. Hey, what's up guys? It's Forrest. Uh, I'm here to show you my micro dwelling. It's a Honda Civic, uh, so extra small, extra stealth. People do not know that I'm camping in here and uh, this is the epitome of hashtag van life. So it's, it's 
gonna be a short tour, obviously, because it's a small space, but here we go. I got lighting set up, uh, just some small little twinkle lights. Um, this is usually how I run power. Uh, so sometimes I'm off grid, sometimes I'm on. Uh, I just run an extension cord to, um, you know, kind of wherever I can get power. Show you where the magic happens. This is the mattress. This is a nice thick piece of memory foam just from Walmart, your friendly neighborhood Walmart. Got the little Mexican blanket. It's like springtime here, even though it's Canada, even though it might snow. So this is what I would like to call the garage. Um, it's got my skateboard. You know, it's got the jerry can, the extra oil, everything you need. I pretty much, for water, it's a question I get a lot, is what I do for water. Um, I keep it really minimal. I'm really into uh, just keeping it minimal here uh, in the van life. Um, just a Nalgene. Uh, they didn't sponsor this video at all or anything like that. Just just a regular old Nalgene film. Uh, we'll go around to the other side, maybe. So on the other side, you'll... You just bump this open. Uh, I like to keep a little bit of reading material. This is the back rows maps of where I'm at. I also do a lot of journaling. That's kind of my creative outlet. So do a little bit of journaling, a little bit of blogging, everything like that. And fix it all duct tape. So I'll show you the kitchen setup. This actually works really great. Um, it just, this is just a really simple butane stove. Just two pieces and the, pro, and the butane can here. So this just acts like, uh, just think of it almost like you're tailgating, right? Like this is the tailgate of a truck. Set that up. You have the rain protection, everything like that. So that was the tour of my uh, micro dwelling, tiny home on wheels. Uh, it's the Civic. I like to call her Betty White. She's old, she's white, but she's still going strong. You know, this isn't a van, right? Well, I mean, not technically, but uh, if, you think of, if you think about it, it's kind of like, it's like a mini, mini... Okay. I was trying to say it's like a mini, mini van, you know? Like, okay, I can't do it. All right. Yo, cut, dude. I, I can't do these hair extensions, man. They're so itchy. Yo, Greg, you want to help me get these hair extensions out? I can't really see what I'm doing here. Yeah. Should I just rip it? <laughs> oh, oh. Ow. <laughs> I have like four hair ties in here too. <laughs> All right, let's go. The 1992 Honda Civic hatchback just wasn't cutting it. But luckily for me, my videographer Gabe actually has the perfect van. I just had to convince him to let me borrow it. Hey, hey buddy. <laughs> this is it, eh? Uh, yeah, so the thing is, is my girlfriend actually really needs the car for school right now. Okay. So I brought you this. Uh, it's pretty good, you know. Just kind of, yeah. you know, get you around at least. Okay, just a little folder bike. Yeah. Um. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, you want this for the van? Using Gabriel's van and switching up social media platforms to cross promote onto my Instagram, I made the ultimate romantic cinematic van life experience video. Freedom of the open road. Traveling around the country, not purposely going anywhere, but seeing everything with purpose. It's a dream for so many. Your headlights being the only thing giving you direction. In 
enjoying the simple things. Solitude. Feeling the warmth of substance in an otherwise cold night. Travel helps figure out who you are, even if you weren't wondering, even if you forgot who you want to be. Joy and pleasure being the main emotions of the moment. It lets you live like you have always been doing what you please. Professions only holding a place in the past. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you have never done? What is it that thrills and scares you, that puts you so close to the edge of your seat that you either have to stand or you fall? These are the things that we do when we have no other choice but to live the life we have always wanted. We stand. We walk. We swim. And we surf. And then we start again. The day, a cycle. We get cold, we get warm. We stay and then go. Van life is the vehicle we choose. The van, our home, the life, is ours. Our dreams only a picture away. When we live simply, we choose to be happy. Van life is the answer to the call of simplicity. Van life can be romantic, it can be difficult, and it can only be what we make it to be. A journey, a home, a connection to nature, the ability to grow, a community opportunity, an experiment, a goal, a dream, a fantasy, an escape, a necessity, a reality. The choice is yours.
Are we doing it right now? We're filming right okay. now. Okay, yeah. Classic. <laughs> I just had reverse, but it clunked in. I think my clutch, my clutch cable's loose. My clutch just gave out, so we're gonna have to go under the van right now. Really? I guess this is good enough. Good place as any to do a little repair. Welcome, welcome to van life. <laughs> <laughs> Cross them over. Sometimes van life genuinely really sucks, but other times it's kind of a bit of a goof and a gag and a, and a laugh and a gaff. So, you know, always take the positives out of the negatives, right? Now, uh, I can say that because I don't have to put on some overalls and get underneath because Gabriel's the Volkswagen man. I'm just the man with the camera today. Volkswagen whisperer. <laughs> I wonder what this looks like from an outsider. The clutch cable yeah. um, has a wing nut at the back of it, and so you can just tighten the wing nut. So let's just do that. Oh, it's a puddle. Oh, oh that's wet. Holy crap. So let's get the vice grips out and give her a tighten. What's the zap strap? Yeah, the whole thing is just zap. And an axe. <laughs> wow. Let's see if they uh, have a pair of ice grips in here. Got him. So the clutch is tight. Clutch seems tight. It might be too tight. Dude, this is gonna be such a sick cover with the birds. <laughs> You're the bird man. <laughs> Yeah, check this out though. Okay, yeah, we're good. So, I, uh, I got you this. You wanna give me a hand, dude? <laughs> yeah, stuck in here. Oh, you really got this thing in here. Wow. Maybe we'll redo her. Yeah. <laughs> With all these challenges, with, with all these challenges, with all these challenges, <laughs> one more time. <laughs>